This is a quick disconnect for the fuel line. The fuel line is under pressure. Before you disconnect this, you should release the pressure in the fuel line. Otherwise, when you do disconnect it, fuel will spray out. One way to release the pressure is to find this cap somewhere on the fuel rail or the fuel system and remove the cap. Then you can plug in a fuel pressure gauge that has a release valve. Screw the end of the fuel pressure gauge onto the rail and then you can push the release valve to release the pressure and be sure and catch the fuel coming out of the line. To remove this disconnect, first using a screwdriver, pry this clip off on the side by the tube. And then it slips out the end. Once this clip is off, you can see that the fuel line is able to turn. It moves in and out, but it does not come off because there are some spring clips inside of here that have to be opened up. To remove the disconnect, you'll need a set of tools like these. Just pick out the appropriate diameter for the fuel line that you're disconnecting. This one is a 5 16 There's a slot on the quick release tool. Slip that over the fuel line. And then press inward on it, forcing the clips open. and then the fuel line should pop off. To replace the fuel line, just push it back on until you hear it snap. And then replace the safety clip. Put this end in first and just snap this over the tube. I 3D printed a double scale model of the quick connect fittings and also the tool that's used to release it. I printed the main body with a cutaway so you can see how the spring clip sits inside here. The tube has a ring formed on it. As it goes through the spring clip, it forces the clips open, allowing the tube to go in. Once it's in through the spring clip, the clips are locked against the ring and they hold it in place. So the tube is able to turn and there is some movement, but it cannot come out because the clips are against the ring. On this side of the spring clip would be an O-ring or a seal. So when you're installing the tube, you always want to push it straight in and not angled, or you may damage this seal. The release tool has a slot here, and on this flange it's slightly angled. So you, when you push it on the tube, it forces the release tool open, allowing it to slide over the tube. As you push the release tool in, it forces the spring clips open far enough so that the ring can come out.
If you're having trouble getting this to work, some of these release tools, this outside diameter, isn't quite large enough to get the spring clips open far enough to allow this spring to go past. So you may have to find a release tool with a slightly larger diameter that can fully open these clips. Next I'm going to disconnect the lower transmission coolant line. You have to use a special tool to remove this. This is a quick disconnect tool set and they come in various sizes. I think this is the one we want to use. So what you have to do is just open this up. There's a slot on one side and put it over the line coming out of the radiator. So it just slides over there and then push it into here, the connector, there's spring clips in there. When you push it in, it'll push those open so it can slide off. Here's what that hose fitting looks like. You can see the four spring clips in there and they have to be pushed open to slide off the fitting on the radiator. Since I'm replacing the radiator anyway, I removed the fitting to give you a better idea how to disconnect this. When the hose is pressed onto this fitting, these spring clips go over this ring and they lock on this side. So when you're pushing that tool in here, it forces those spring clips open so they can go over this ring. If you don't have one of these quick disconnect tools, you can take a piece of hose, a hard plastic hose, and cut a slit in it to fit over the fitting and then use that to force it apart. <laughs> 